Hello, my name is Nakai Rimmer, and we are looking at Stokes' theorem. This is a series of videos. This is the third video. In our first video, we just introduced Stokes' theorem and did an example. And then we, um, in our second video, worked Stokes' theorem the other way. You have a choice of either doing a surface integral, calculating the flux of the curl of a vector field over a surface, or calculating the line integral around the boundary of the surface. That's what Stokes' theorem is built to do. So in this example here, we have a vector field and we're asked to calculate the flux of the curl of the vector field. And our um, surface S is a cone, a portion of the cone that is above the XY plane. Uh, that cone has the equation one minus the square root of X squared plus Y squared. Um, the fact that it's in the one minus orientation there is that um, it's a cone that opens downward, the vertex is at one. When X and Y are both zero, Z is equal to one. So that's our cone, okay? And we want the portion that's above the XY plane, uh, outward normal. So that's gonna lead to your, uh, that's your surface, um, it's not shaded, um, but um, the boundary of that surface is this circle in the XY plane. And if you have outward normal, then your, your, your uh, orientation on your curve will be counterclockwise. Okay, great. Well, we're gonna go execute the line integral instead. To execute a line integral, we we'll have to parameterize the curve. We gotta figure out what this curve is. It's called z equals one minus the square root of x plus y squared. But at the xy plane, z is equal to zero. So if we add that rad over, we're just, we're just looking at the unit circle. So we parameterize it in a previous example, uh, x is cosine t, y is sine t, but now z is equal to zero here. It was equal to one in the other problem. Uh, yeah, and t goes from zero to two pi to execute your, your um, the uh, counterclockwise uh, orientation. We build a vector r out of this. We take its derivative dr, and that's what we're going to dot with f. But f needs to be restricted to only be on c. So inside of f, we have x's, y's, and z's. We now replace them with what they are from the parameterization. Every x gets replaced with cosine t. Every y gets replaced with sine t. And, and then we end up with this. Uh, and z is equal to 0. So anytime you see a z, it's going to 0 out. OK, great. So then this is what we dot, f and dr. We'll get negative cosine t sine t plus sine squared t. And then the other two parts zero out. There's a zero in the j component of f. And there's a zero in the k component of dr. So when we dot them, we just get the i component multiplication. That's what we integrate from zero to two pi. But we can take advantage of the fact that this is a full period. Sine t cosine t has a period of two pi. You could actually integrate it. It's a nice little u sub. When it comes to sine squared, you need the half angle identity. Uh, for cosine squared, it's one half one plus the cosine of double t. Well, for sine squared, it's one half one minus the cosine of double t. All right, nice simple integral because we take advantage of the fact that we have full periods of these functions. The function sine t cosine t has a zero. Um, area because if you take the product of two periodic functions of the same period, then that product also has that same period. Um, when it comes to cosine of 2t, you actually have two full periods of that. Um, the 2 takes the normal period and cuts it in half. And so when you integrate under the cosine, um, whatever's above cancels to what below when you do a full period. When, if you do two full periods, it's still going to cancel. You can definitely integrate those. But I want you to recognize when you can just use this fact. And we're just integrating one half. Okay. So we get one half t from zero to two pi. We get pi for this one as well. We got pi for another example, actually. Okay. Executing Stokes theorem. Instead of calculating the flux of the curl, we are calculating the line integral around the boundary. All right, great. Let's see another example. 
Calculate the outward flux of the curl. This time we're talking about an ellipsoid. That's a football or a pill shape. Um, the part of the ellipsoid that lies above the xy plane. The z equals zero is the xy plane. And we have this vector field here. We're not going to calculate the flux of the curl. Um, what we're instead going to do is use Stokes' theorem and calculate the line integral around the boundary. So here's a, a wireframe drawing of our surface. Outward normal. So we have the boundary. And if you're outward normal, you have this orientation that is counterclockwise. Our equation is 2x squared plus 2y squared plus z squared equals 8. We're going to go and calculate f dot dr around the boundary, but we have to be able to parameterize this curve c. So we want that we want to be on the surface, but we also want z to be equal to zero, though, because that's where our curve is occurring at on the xy plane. And so, um, yeah, that's just a, a circle. It's not a unit circle. Um, 2x squared plus 2y squared will be equal to 8. So x squared plus y squared will be equal to 4. Circle of radius 2, centered at the origin. How do you parameterize that? You let x equal to cosine t, y equals to sine t, and then z is 0. We're on, we're on the xy plane. t goes from 0 to 2 pi. We have parameterized it. We build the vector r out of this x, y, and z components, uh, i, j, and k components are the x, y, and z. Take the derivative of it, that's dr. That's where we're going to dot with f, but we have to rewrite f. We can't use the x's, y's, and z's that are in f. We rewrite f by replacing all the x's with 2 cosine t. All the y's get replaced with 2 sine t. And if there's ever any z's, that gets replaced with 0. And x squared plus y squared is 4. So in the k component there, we have x squared plus y squared. That's going to be equal to 4 because z is 0. And we're at the, we're, okay. And so um, we are going to dot these two. Okay. So it ends up as negative 12 cosine sine. And then we have positive 2. Uh, times I mean well, negative two times negative two, so positive four sine squared, and then we get a positive four cosine squared from the j component, and then we'll get our positive twelve sine t cosine t. Watch what happens. And the, this, we didn't really care what was in that z component anyway, k component anyway of f, uh, because dr had a zero there. If you look closely at that negative sine t cosine negative 12 sine t cosine t and positive 12 sine t cosine t they cancel each other out and then look at what you're left with sine squared plus cosine squared well it's, it's four sine squared and it's actually four cosine squared oh that's a typo sorry about that let's see if i could put it in there uh in fact let me just put the four on the outside and just sort of shade this in here. Okay, that kind of fixes the mistake. Sorry about that. And so, uh, yeah, that's just four. The answer is eight t. Uh, um, well, four t with the two pi plugged in there. The answer is eight pi. So we're avoiding execute executing the surface integral of the flux of the curl by doing the line integral around the boundary. We've seen. Um, three examples in this series of videos here. Um, I have one more example for you, but it's going to be the opposite way again, where we're going to, instead of calculating the line integral, we're going to calculate the surface integral over a, a nice surface that will be the, will have the boundary as that curve for C. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this multivariable calculus journey. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe. Uh, reach out to me if you need any help. I have a video, I uh, have a series of videos. I have um, a workbook with work, um, midterm level questions, exam level questions, and full solutions. So reach out to me if you need some help with multivariable calculus. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.